Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. This is the Financial Survival Network. Are you concerned about the future? Not sure where to put your savings? What about the two-year decline in gold and silver? Then you need to come to the Liberty Mastermind Symposium. The clock is ticking. Countdown to collapse. You know something's not right. The dominoes are falling. The emergency currencies, the emerging currencies are in free fall. What does it all mean? Forget about the mainstream media. They never see anything coming. Where were where were they? They missed the crash in 2008, and no doubt they'll miss the next one too. You can bet on that. Come to the second Liberty Mastermind Symposium on February 21st and 22nd of this month in Las Vegas. You'll hear from 15 alternative media economic thought leaders. Present will be Wayne Allen Root, Jeff Berwick, Daniel McAdams, Andrew Hoffman, Elijah Johnson, Gregory Manorino, Tacoa De Silva, Daryl Robert Schoon, Daniel Amaduri, Seth Peritzman, Robert Ian, Mickey Fulp, Jerry Robinson, Gary Christensen, Turd Ferguson, myself, Kerry Lutz, David Morgan, Kevin Drost, and of course, my partner, Alan Butler. There's no other program like this, I promise you. Go to libertymastermind.us and sign up today. It's in Las Vegas on February 21st and 22nd this month. Program is a must if you're unsure what to do. You'll get virtually unfettered access to all the speakers. That's libertymastermind.us. If you need a plan for the coming times, you got to go to libertymastermind.us. I look forward to seeing all of you there. And everyone attending the Friday night dinner with keynote speaker Wayne Allen Root will receive a free e-copy of my book, Forget Wall Street, Go for the Gold and Silver 2. FSN, it's about what's next. So, when is the collapse coming? Is it coming? And... If it doesn't come for another 10 years, you got to have income and you got to have it now, which is why we've got our prime sponsor, Jason Hartman of jasonhartman.com on with us now. Jason, welcome back. Hey, thank you, Kerry. Good to talk to you again. Hey, you too. So, so we got this quandary. Some of us, like myself, believe that this merry-go-round can't keep on spinning forever. Others believe that it's going to go on for quite a while longer we don't know how long and you got to figure out a way to make some money and hopefully uh, give as little away to the tax man as you possibly can and that brings us of course to real estate right well it does i uh, i think it's the uh, most historically proven asset class in american history if not world history yeah, and for obvious reasons, and you happen to be in the former camp, you don't believe there's going to be a collapse, do you? Well, I used to believe that for many, many years, and I would still believe it, Carrie, if the U.S. did not have a particularly interesting and advantageous set of circumstances, including, uh, but not limited to, <laughs> to sound lawyer speak, <laughs> how's that sound? <laughs> included, but not limited to, uh, the largest military in the world, which allows us to bully other countries around. And, and this whole thing is predicated on the fact that if we want to keep spending like idiotic drunken sailors, which we do, and, you know, I don't condone any of this. I don't agree with any of this. I'm just, you know, telling you the way I see it. OK. Um, and so if our government wants to keep spending like drunken sailors, you know, the, the, the business plan has to be that we force our ever devaluing debt onto other countries, okay, like China, most specifically, so that we can keep spending. And in order to do that, we need to have the bully pulpit. And I say we do, for better or worse, fair or unfair, it's the way it is. We've got the largest military in the world by a huge margin. 
we've got the largest economy on the world by a huge margin, even though it is built on, you know, smoke and mirrors. But but other economies are built on smoke and mirrors, too. OK, you know, we're not we're not the only one that does that. Uh, we've got the reserve currency of the world. I know many countries would like to change that, but uh, I don't think they're going to be able to for, for the reasons we're discussing now. Um, we've got the largest brand name in the world. And recently, we, we now know we have the largest energy reserves in the world, which is, uh, which is our, our, our new huge, huge advantage. And that one actually is real. It's not bully pulpit. It's not smoke and mirrors. It's not fuzzy math, etc., um, but, you know, for, for those reasons, including the brand, and some people, when I said that, may not have understood what I meant. So let me just elaborate on that one. The others, we all know we've got the biggest military, et cetera. But, you know, still, when you look at studies of, uh, you know, China, for example, you've got all these people, and I've got a friend who's very knowledgeable, very interesting guy who lives in China and, you know, is constantly talking about how great China is and what a disaster America is. And, you know, you look at the Press Freedom Index, which just recently came out, and China, uh, you know, along with Saudi Arabia and some other ridiculous countries in North Korea, are at the bottom. They're the worst. There's just, you know, almost no press freedom, right? U.S. isn't so good either. Uh, the Scandinavian countries are great, by the way. But, uh, you know, Chinese millionaires, they want to move to the United States. It's not the other way around. Now, Jim Rogers, you know, He's an exception, and I'm a huge Jim Rogers fan. He's in Singapore, though. He's, he's in not Singapore. in Beijing I know, I know. or I, I, uh, I, Shanghai. I, I, <laughs> I know. I know he's in Singapore. Uh, and I've had him on my show a few times. I know you have, too. And, and, you know, he's a big proponent of China. And, you know, see, all of these economists out there, they're doing something called math. And what I'm saying to your listeners, Carrie, that math doesn't matter that much. And I, I don't think that's right. I'm just saying it is the way it is. It doesn't matter that much when you've got the big military, when you've got the big brand, when you've got the reserve currency and the means to maintain reserve currency status. Now, if it was just about math, you know, uh, the country would have collapsed by now. The reserve currency status would be gone by now. But the fact is, it's not just about math. OK, it's about all of these things. And uh, America is in the very enviable position of having the bully pulpit, if you will. And uh, I, I say we can keep this charade, uh, this house of cards going for decades to come. You really think so, huh? I, I do. I do. I think so. I, I don't think um, we will have a collapse as long as we can force other countries to buy our ever more worthless debt. And I think we can keep that game going for a long, long time. Am I crazy? I don't know. Tell me. Pick it. Pick it. My idea. <laughs> well, well, I just think uh, I see a lot of flaws in the Chinese economic model, as do you. Uh, their military is coming up pretty fast, but yep. their pollution, all their cities are contaminated. And if you, uh, I was there 17 years ago, and every young person I met there wanted to get the hell out of there and come to Flushing, New York. Mm -hmm. uh, in San Francisco, they wanted to come to America. Yeah. And I, you know, just even if they're making more money, they still want to get out of the place. It's unhealthy. And, you know, from my way of thinking, like you said, the Chinese billionaires, they're buying up property in Vancouver, in Australia, in New York, in San Francisco, in Miami. And interesting thing that's overlooked in all of these real estate reports they're always saying cash sales are huge bigger proportion of sales than ever in real estate and they're always attributing it to investors that's only part of the story because international buyers when they buy real estate in foreign countries are cash buyers so when they uh, when they look at that statistic they get the wrong uh, conclusion they draw the wrong conclusion because the international buyers are becoming a bigger part of the international markets which are generally the ones you stay away from by the way for good you know, reason Carrie, I, 
I, I, I remember years ago in my uh, Creating Wealth seminars and on my Creating Wealth podcast, I used to discuss, and I should bring it up again because it's interesting to look at things like that and, and look at them again now, a, uh, a, a Milken Institute report where Michael Milken and Jeremy Siegel wrote a very interesting report about how we, we don't have a, um, a an asset surplus in the world. We have an asset shortage in the world. And when you look at all of these other countries that, you know, we have, we have more and more people around the world coming into the middle class. Uh, you know, estimates say that globalization has lifted out about 300 million people out of poverty. And, uh, you know, certainly China is the, the biggest place where that's happened. And, and there are many environmental problems. And, and, you know, listen, I'm not moving to China, okay? <laughs> you know, there, there are, you, you can't access Facebook or YouTube in China. My God, are you kidding me? <laughs> that's absurd, okay? Uh, so, you know, as great as, as China is doing with a lot of this stuff, um, I, you know, and then you add that to the demographic problem they have, you know, with it, which is an outgrowth of their one child policy, you know, in 15 years, China has a huge, huge demographic problem facing it, meaning that there just aren't enough young people. You know, you've got to have young people coming in to support uh, the older people as as they start to age and retire and and you know uh, granted there aren't you know there's not much in the way of entitlement programs in China like there are here but you know as people age and 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 get out of the workforce and need more medical care what are you going to do with all these people I mean it, China China has an incredibly big problem facing it uh, so, uh, you know, and, and, and then, you know, there's a huge shor shortage of women over there. You know, when, when you have a bunch of men who don't have access to women, you know, that's like a prison situation. It is not good. <laughs> it's like Alaska. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. You know, it's, um, it's, it's not Bad a good news. thing. Yeah. Bad news. So, I agree uh, the collapse, but it can happen anytime, just like... Uh, in 1913, nobody expected uh, World War I to break out six months later, and there it was. And then they thought it was going to end right away. It wasn't going to go on for four or five years, and there it was. It went on for four or five years. These things happen, and they happen very quickly. But uh, on to the next thing. I had a uh, listener ask, uh, her name was June, uh, am I better off with multifamily housing? pooling up money with uh, friends and family, buying a, a housing complex, 10, 20, 30, or even more units than I am just buying up uh, single-family houses. And I'm sure that's a question you get get asked kind of regularly, Jason. And what, what's your take on it? Right, right. Well, you know, I, I like, uh, when it comes to, I, I, of course, love income property. Any Any real estate that produces income, I think is far and away the best investment going. Um, and then within the income property category, of course, Carrie, you could have, you know, office buildings, you could have retail centers, you could have apartment complexes, single family homes, uh, you know, a bunch of other things, but those are the main ones, right? And, and so I like housing the best because at the end of the day, Everybody needs a place to sleep. You know, they say there are three common human needs at the, the bottom of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and those are food, clothing, and shelter, okay? So uh, let them rent that shelter from you. Housing is needed. They can outsource, uh, you know, call centers to India and the Philippines, lessening the need for office space in the U.S. They can outsource uh, shopping to some extent and retail to the internet, lessening the need for retail properties. And we've certainly seen huge impacts on shopping centers, uh, you know, with Circuit City going out of business, Best Buy on the brink, uh, and, you know, JC Penney, Sears, you know, I mean, of course, this is always changing and those problems are complex and multidimensional, but certainly retail is being impacted in a, in a negative way, a internet. Um, industrial properties, I didn't mention that one. Uh, you know, of course, they can outsource manufacturing to where? We were just talking about China, okay? But at the end of the day, the population in the United States is increasing. And, and people only have three choices. They can buy, they can rent, or they can be homeless, mm -hmm. okay? 
and and one when I said that during one of my uh, my seminars, uh, someone a smart aleck uh, heckler heckling me uh, ro- raised their hand and said, "Oh no, Jason, they can uh, live with their parents." Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's more crazy. and more now yeah. these days, right? Yeah, that's uh, the boomerang generation is Gen Y, right? But um, yeah. but y- you know, uh, when it comes to single family versus apartments. Um, you know, first, the first thing you want to consider, Carrie, is diversification. Y- you know, there's an old saying in real estate that all real estate is local. So you want to take the most historically performing asset class, income property, but diversify geographically. So if you were looking at a situation where you could only afford to buy one apartment building, and I, by the way, I should disclose to the listeners, I own single family homes and I own uh, large apartment complexes too, okay? So I do both, okay? Mm -hmm. But you've gotta make sure first that you can diversify in hopefully three different cities. And my company helps people buy properties all over the country in markets that we like. So, you know, if a typical person came to us and said, you know, they had had enough money to purchase, uh, you know, uh, $300,000 worth of real estate, uh, we would say, you know, diversify that into three different cities, maybe Houston, uh, maybe Memphis, and maybe Atlanta, for example, okay? Um, and, and those are just examples. We have other markets as well, okay? Uh, so, so buying one apartment building, you know, where all your eggs are in one geographical market can be risky. Now, if it's a wealthier client and they say they have, uh, you know, uh, $10 million to invest, they can buy three apartment buildings in those three different cities, Uh, you know, three, three million dollar, you know, three point three million dollar apartment buildings in those three different cities. And they would be geographically diversified. But I want to hopefully see them investing in three different market areas because, you know, one can have a downturn while another is having an upturn in a country as large and diverse as the United States there are about 400 local real estate markets. And, and, and there is no such thing here as a national real estate market. All markets are local, all real estate is local. So the first thing is, can you diversify into three markets? That's the first question. Whether it be huge apartment complexes in three cities or three single family homes in three cities, that's one thing. Now the next thing is, single family homes historically tend to appreciate much better than apartment buildings do, okay? Uh, Because single family homes are not sold, thankfully, based on the income they produce. They're mostly sold by comparison. And comparison carry, when we get in one of these, you know, bubble markets, these feeding frenzies, uh, where, you know, rates are low and housing affordability is high, things start to get very illogical. And residential home buyers that buy single family homes, they buy based on comparison, which can be way out of sync with income. And that can work for us as investors because we can capitalize on seeing higher value appreciation in our properties and maybe you know liquidate some of them and, and gain some nice capital appreciation at that point. Okay. Apartment buildings, on the other hand, are sold based on the income they produce. So there you've got a more perfect market and a more educated uh, buyer and a more ed- mm-hmm. educated investor. And whenever a market becomes more perfect, if you will, and I, I sort of put perfect in snarky quotations, okay, um, because Wall Street is sort of a more perfect market. And you know, I hate Wall Street. I think Wall Street is the modern version of organized crime. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but, uh, but, but in a way, it's more perfect because you have a stock exchange. And, you know, if you own uh, shares in Apple, you can't call your stockbroker and say, hey, do some creative marketing and try and sell my shares for more than they're, they're going for on the exchange. He's going to think you're nuts, right? Because yeah, you are be nuts. Yeah, the sure. exchange dictates the price, period. It's perfect in that way. But with real estate... You can add some creativity to the mix and, uh, you know, a little bit of luck to the mix. And you can uh, you can really enhance the value of a property. Okay, so um, historically speaking, single family homes, more appreciation than apartments. However, uh, conversely, here's an apartment advantage with an apartment building. You can buy 
an underperforming uh, building and you can add value to it more so than you can with single family homes. Here's one example of that. You know, say for example, uh, the apartment building um, uh, has a, uh, a laundry facility, but it's not well operated. Uh, not many of the residents in the complex Mm -hmm. use it or, or whatever, right? Well, you can go in and, and believe it or not, just by, uh, you know, improving the laundry facility, you can improve revenue there. And the apartment building is sold on a multiple of revenue. So, uh, you know, if it's sold on an eight times revenue multiple, for example, you know, if, if you can add uh, $500 per month, that's $6,000 per year. Uh, and just for round numbers sake, we'll make that a 10 times multiple, although not many of them are sold at 10 times. Um, you know, you could add uh, 60,000 uh, or 6,000 times 10, $60,000 in value to your property just on a little small enhancement like that, where you can't do that in a, a single family. Sure. Family home. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so there are, there are many differences to consider there. Um, mostly, you know, most of our clients are buying single family homes. They're simple, they're easy to operate, they're very easy to understand. They, they historically will appreciate better than apartment buildings will. Um, you know, financing is, is better. Uh, the, uh, and let me mention that one. You know, one of the beautiful things about single family homes is that you can get a three decade long fixed rate mortgage for rates, I say now, below the rate of real inflation. So effectively, you have a negative cost of borrowing, meaning you get paid to borrow. Right. Because if you believe, as I do, and probably you do, although I don't know, uh, that the inflation rate is higher than the government would have us believe. Oh, okay? for sure. And no in no fact, question. if you believe that inflation rates are higher than mortgage rates, you know, can, is inflation rate, is the inflation rate higher than about four and three quarters percent, which is the rate an investor can borrow at, okay? Mm -hmm. um, then you're getting paid to borrow, but it, it gets even better because when we own income property, we don't pay our own debts. Our tenants pay our debts for us. So we outsource the debt to the renter and then we borrow below the cost of inflation and we fixed that rate for three Three decades. So, Carrie, I mean, imagine this. It's February 2014, okay? If someone borrows and buys a single-family home today, they won't pay that loan off, potentially, until 2044. I mean, just comprehend that for a moment. You know, may, maybe, maybe there will or won't be a, a total economic or dollar collapse by then, but certainly we all agree there is going to be a lot of inflation between now and the next 30 years. Has to and, be. And that inflation is going to benefit us dramatically because it reduces the cost of our debt. It pays off our debt for us, but it also increases the price or the value of our commodities. And what is income property? What are single family homes and apartment buildings made of? They're made of commodities. They're made of mm -hmm. petroleum products. They're made of energy. They're made of lumber. They're made of concrete. They're made of copper wire. They're made of glass and steel and all of these great things. And so, so that's a fantastic thing. Now, if you were to buy an apartment building, you know, you can't get a 30 year fixed rate loan. The longest you'll get on an apartment building, and I have one of these on one of my apartment buildings, I have a, 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 th a loan amount that's just over $3 million on one of them, and it's fixed for 10 years, which I thought was about the most awesome deal ever in a commercial loan, because typically you can only five get years, it fixed right? for yeah, five to seven years, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but my single family homes, they have... 30-year fixed mortgages, okay? Uh, on the apartment building, it becomes adjustable after five, seven, or if you're really lucky like I was on this one deal, 10 years, okay? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the much better financing on the residential and, and less money down, too, usually. Sure. So, uh, so a better I, leverage. You know, so the answer to the question is that it depends on the investor, but you got to make sure you can be in three different markets, three different cities, okay? And that doesn't mean, you know, uh, the, the city that's a suburb of the main city, okay? It means a totally different market. You know, we say diversify geographically. 
And uh, we help people do nationwide investing. And so, so three markets, you got to be able to afford to be in three markets at least, uh, if not, you know, four or five even. Um, and, uh, and then all of the other factors that I, uh, I mentioned, you know, if, if you're, if, if it's a wealthier client that, you know, has 10, 20 million, $30 million to invest, then, Hey, you know, they don't want to mess around with little single family homes. Okay. Sure it's, it's just, yeah. it's just small potatoes. Economies of scale. Yeah. Economy of scale. And, and, and they'll take a lower return to have ease of management and, and that's what they all get. Mm -hmm. But you know, if it's, if it's the, the typical middle class person, you know, and they want to buy six or 10 or 12 single family homes for 80 to $120,000 each. Oh, that's the way to go. Yeah, I mean, no -brainer. you know, you know, you, you, you can buy, you know, two single family homes in three different cities and you have a nice diversified portfolio and, and you've got, you know, $600,000 worth of real estate working for you. And then after that, try and buy two more every year. And by golly, in five years, you got a, you got an empire. <laughs> sure. Makes total <laughs> you know? sense. Yeah, Just we, keep that's reinvesting. What, that's what we help do. For, that's what we help uh, people do. And, and that sounds like the way to go because, uh, you can't gamble on when this collapse, if it's going to happen or when it's going to happen. And, of course, we've got an offer for you out there. Yeah. As usual, tell us about it here. Yeah, absolutely. So if you go to uh, jasonhartman.com slash Lutz, L-U-T-Z, Carrie's last yep. name, jasonhartman.com slash Lutz, um, you can get a free membership. And we're going to cut this off in just a couple more weeks here because we've been running it, I think, for about two weeks now. You get a free membership to Jason Hartman University. And this is something that we sell all the time for $120 a year. And it's, uh, it's free for one year for any of your listeners, Carrie. Uh, and uh, they get educational uh, PDFs and, and uh, due diligence checklists and articles and um, access to all of our old podcast archives. So... Uh, the Creating Wealth Show has about 361 episodes now, and um, uh, many of the old shows, we, we take them down, so they're not available uh, as part of the, the freebie thing. We run mm -hmm. them, but then we pull them off later, and, and so those are available in the member section. There's some premium articles and blog postings, suggested readings, uh, some research reports, uh, a bunch of different audios, and then a 20% discount on our products and events. So if you want to take yeah. advantage of any of our other stuff, 20% uh, discount on that. And, of course, uh, we can link you up with an investment counselor who can help you uh, actually find properties. So un unlike most people, uh, you know, that are out promoting real estate, those are gurus. You know, they, they just go out and they say, hey, buy real estate, buy my course, sign up for my coaching program. Well, we actually have properties that people can buy. We're a real estate broker. So, you know, we what we say has to be conservative enough to come true in real life you know you notice we're not talking about going out buying a property tomorrow flipping that property and making two hundred thousand yeah, dollars right. in a month okay sure you know this is this is the long term you know re real way to invest it's not a bunch yeah. of hype so know? if you want to get started in this jason hartman university is really a great place to go and it costs you 120 dollars, but now it's free for a few more of you out there. So just go there. Great place to get started. Get your feet wet. And then when you're ready, you talk to one of Jason's counselors and you're on the road. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so that website, again, it's my website, jasonhartman.com. But for the special offer, we have a secret page. And that's jasonhartman.com slash Lutz, L-U-T-Z. And it'll take you right there. All right, Jason. Hey, thanks for being on as always. And we'll talk to you again next month. You be well. Sounds good. Happy investing. What happens if the collapse never really comes? You need income and Jason Hartman can help you get it. He's helped thousands of people realize their dreams of financial independence through real estate investing. And now he's got an unbeatable offer for you. He's offering my ebook, Forget Wall Street, go for the gold and silver too, for free. Just visit jasonhartman.com slash Lutz. The first 100 Financial Survival Network listeners will get the book free. Remember, you can't afford to put all your eggs in one basket. 
real estate should be part of a balanced investment portfolio along with gold and silver. Just go to jasonhartman.com slash Lutz and sign up today. When it comes to real estate investing, Jason Hartman is the only person we trust on the Financial Survival Network. So make your money work as hard as you do by building an income property empire. Real estate is America's proven investment. Go to www.jasonhartman.com slash Lutz and get your free ebook today. That's Jason, H-A-A-R-T-M-A-N dot com slash Lutz. That's Jason, H-A-R-T-M-A-N dot com slash Lutz. Jason knows how to help you retire with a portfolio of income producing property. Go to jasonhartman.com slash Lutz. The Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. This is the Financial Survival Network. 